Single family homes are not the only properties that you can wholesale for profits. Apartments are also great to flip and aren't as difficult as you might think and are a huge opportunity right under your nose. So in today's video, I'm gonna break it down for you. Get ready to learn the 10 steps to wholesale your first apartment. Hi, it's Jerry Norton, the nation's leading expert on flipping real estate. And when I first got started in real estate, I primarily focused on single family homes, but naturally I came across multifamily deals. So I started with wholesaling a few duplexes, then I did a few fourplexes, and then I did an eight unit apartment, and then I wholesaled a 42 unit apartment for over six figures. The biggest difference between single family and multifamily is understanding the buy criteria. With single family, the buy criteria is based on after repair value, ARV, or what it will sell for once it's fixed up. But multifamily are income producing properties. So instead of looking at comps to determine the value, you look at the net operating income or cash flow that it produces. Basically, the more cash it produces, the higher the return on investment for an investor and the more valuable it is. So let's break down exactly how to analyze a multifamily deal and the 10 steps to wholesaling apartments. But first, if we've never met, I'm Jerry Norton, and this channel is dedicated to helping you make more money right now in real estate not later in 10 or 20 years or even three to five years, but right now so that you can achieve true financial freedom and live your dream life. Consider subscribing to my channel, click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Whenever you wholesale any type of real estate, it all starts with determining the potential value of the property. Just like with single family, there is an as is value or what it's worth in its current state, and then there's the after repair value or what it would be worth if it were fixed up. Apartments are no different. So step one to analyzing an apartment is to determine the after repair value of the multifamily. Now this is often referred to as the pro forma. Now a pro forma is the projected financials once it's fully functional. In other words, once fixed up and rented, how much cash will it be producing? A simple way to do this is to take the average gross rents in the area and then subtract 75% to cover the operating expenses. For example, if it's a fourplex and each unit rents for $800 a month, that's $3,200 in gross rent or $38,400 annually. So then you take $38,400 times 0.25, which is the same as subtracting 75%, to get $9,600. So $9,600 is the net operating income or NOI. Now step two, once you know the pro forma NOI, we're gonna use a valuation ratio called cap rate to determine the value. So let's talk about cap rate. Cap rate is simply the return on investment for an income property. So in this example we gave earlier, if the NOI is $9,600 and an investor wanted to earn a 10 cap or 10% return on investment ROI, then 9,600 divided by 0 0.10, 10%, is $96,000. So think about it, if an investor pays $96,000 to buy the property and the property produces 9,600 in net operating income, then the investor earned a 10% return on investment. So here's how we use cap rate to determine the value of a multifamily. Multifamily investors use a standard classification based on the area and the building. So for example, a class A apartment is a really nice building in a really nice area. Since the risk is lower, investors are happy to earn a lower return on investment, say 6% or a six cap. But if the property is older or it's in a lower income area, let's say a class C, then turnover is higher, crime might be higher, it's a less desirable area, so their risk is higher. Investors may wanna earn an 11 cap or 11% return return on investment. So now that you have a basic understanding of cap rate, find out what the cap rate is for that property that you're looking to wholesale. The easiest way is to go on a website called LoopNet and see what the cap rate is for similar properties in the same area. For example, let's say we use the same example and let's say that that fourplex is in a class B area and the pro forma NOI is $9,600 a year and the going cap rate in that area is 8%. So 9,600 divided by 0 0.08 equals 120 thousand for the pro forma value. Okay, now let's see how well you've been paying attention. Let's say that the pro forma annual gross rents for a 16 unit apartment are 118,000 and the cap rate for the area is 11%. What's the value? Stop this video right now and do the math. Okay, are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so step one, first we have to calculate the NOI by taking 118,000 times 0.25, which is the same as subtracting 75% for operating expenses, and that equals 29,500 
for your net operating income or annual cash flow. Step two is to take the NOI of $29,500 divided by the cap rate of 11% to get $295,000. So that means an investor who wants to earn an 11 cap on that apartment would pay $295,000. Now I hope that makes sense. If not, go back and watch this again. Okay, step three is repairs. So now that you know the ARV or the pro forma value of the property, now we have to subtract the cost of repairs, if any. So what needs fixed up to get the property rent ready? Subtract that number from your pro forma value. So next you will need to factor in and subtract lost cash flow during the turnaround phase. How long will it take to get the property fixed up and rented and producing cash flow? If it's gonna take 12 months to get the property operational and the annual NOI is 29,500, then you're gonna to need to subtract 29,500 to account for it. The last calculation is to subtract your desired wholesale fee. So in this example with the 16 unit, let's say that you wanted to make a $40,000 wholesale fee. So let's put it all together. So if the pro forma value is 295,000 minus 50,000 in repairs, minus 29,500 in lost revenue during the turnaround phase, minus your wholesale fee of 40,000, that equals $175,500 as your maximum allowable offer. Now I created a calculator for running all of these numbers when wholesaling a multifamily. It makes it really fast. You just enter in a few numbers and it calculates your offer price for you. And I'll give that to you for free. If you want it, just click the link in the description. So now that you understand how to calculate the buy price when wholesaling multifamily, let me show you my 10 step process. Step number one is to do what I did and start small with duplexes and fourplexes. Get your feet wet with smaller apartments and then you can move up from there. Step number two is to acquire a list of multifamily property owners from a data provider such as listsource.com and then send direct mail to the owners of record or skip trace to get their contact numbers and call them. Also obtain a list of property managers as they also have clients looking to sell. Your goal is to find tired or burned out investors that are motivated sellers. Step three is once you have a motivated seller, run the formula to determine your MAO. Step four is to make the offer, but instead of executing a purchase and sale agreement with the seller, use a 30-day option agreement. An option locks in the seller, but it doesn't commit you to the deal. So if you don't find a buyer in 30 days, the only repercussion is you lose your option fee. So make that as low as possible. Watch this video to learn more about how options work. Tell the seller that the reason why you need a 30-day option is because you have a partner that you work with, more on that in a minute, and you need some time to do further due diligence to make sure that the deal works. Unlike single family, a 30-day due diligence is common with multifamily and commercial. And a quick tip here, you may need to renegotiate later, which I'll explain in a minute, so you wanna position this correctly upfront with the seller by saying the following. Mr. Seller, I'm not 100% sure that I can make this number work until after I get with my partner and after we do our due diligence. For that reason, let's do a 30-day option agreement. So this gives you plenty of time to find a buyer, which is why I love options so much. And if you want my option agreement, I'll give that to you as well for free. I'll just put a link in the description and you can have that as well. Step number five is to find a buyer. Your ideal buyer will be another investor who owns a multifamily in the area. Acquire a list of multifamily owners in that area from a data provider such as ListSource, then skip trace the list to get a hold of the owners. This is basically the same list you already acquired in step two. You could also put filters in for cash transactions transactions during the past 12 months and this will let you know who's buying in the area and if they recently bought they will probably buy again. Step number six is an even better method than tracking down owners, which is to contact local multifamily property managers. You can drive the properties from your multifamily list as there will probably be a number on the property advertising for rent. When you call the for rent signs, you will most likely talk to a property manager, not the owner, which is just as good because in addition to representing the owner of that building, they also represent other multifamily investors. Let the property manager know you have a property that you're looking to unload in the area for a great deal and you want to see if the owner they represent would be interested or if they have any other clients who may be interested. Step number seven, you could offer to JV or pay a fee to the property manager if they facilitate helping you get a deal done. But I found that you don't always need to do that because the property manager is motivated by getting another building to manage. Step number eight, with each investor and property manager you talk to, find out how they determine their numbers. Since they are active local multifamily 
multifamily investors, they will educate you on the area and the rents and cap rates and how they determine their buy criteria. The more you do this, the better you will learn. Honestly, in my opinion, this is the fastest way to learn how to wholesale multifamily. Step number nine, after speaking to a dozen or more investors, you will learn the true number for your deal and if you have the right number. Step number 10, if you don't have a spread from your highest and best cash offer, go back and renegotiate with the seller. Let's say that you have an option for 375,000 and your highest and best offer from a cash investor is 375,000. So there's no spread for you. If that happens, go back to the seller and renegotiate. In this example, tell the seller that 375 doesn't work after further due diligence, your partner, AKA cash buyer, is willing to move forward on the deal, but it only works if the price is reduced to 325,000, giving you a $50,000 wholesale fee. Make the partner the bad guy. If the seller agrees to reduce the price, execute a purchase and sale agreement for 325,000, assign it to your ready to go cash buyer for 375,000, and then do a single closing assignment, and you walk away with a big fat $50,000 check, and you do it again. Now I believe if you can wholesale single family, you can learn how to wholesale multifamily. Like I always say in these videos, the key to succeeding at building a successful business flipping real estate is having systems to organize and manage all of the moving parts and that's why you should look into my all-inclusive deal management system called Flipster. If you haven't heard of Flipster, not only does it organize and streamline and automate all of the steps to flipping houses, it actually finds and funds deals for you. So if you're looking to start wholesaling multifamily, Flipster can take you to that next level. If you're into flipping real estate, you owe it yourself to check it out. Just click the link in the description. And if you learned something in this video, show some love, hit that like button right now and be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm dedicated to helping you make more money and less time flipping real estate so that you can live your dream life. And just for fun, be sure to watch this next video where I share a case study where I wholesaled an office building for $65,000. It's a really cool story and will get you excited for wholesaling bigger deals, so watch that right now. And remember, it's not about the money, it's about having the time and freedom to have, be, do, and give everything you want in life. That's what it's all about, and I'll see you on the next video.